Okay, I've got Ray Studio 3 analysis pulled up, and here I'm looking at my data. And let's say I want to work on looking, reviewing one session. So I'm going to pull that up. Now, right now, I have a few different profiles, but the profile that I'm working off is this one, this basic one. And all I have in here is the time and distance. I do have track map down in the bottom corner, and then I have measures listed over here, measures or channels. Now, for this purpose, I want to be able to identify the slow points on the racetrack. So I'm going to, just to make it easy, I'm going to create a new custom layout. So over here are the different uh, layouts that are pre-configured as well as uh, a custom layout. You can give it any name you want. I'm going to call this speed dash map. Name it anything you'd like. All right, so now it pulls that up. It's got RPM in there by default. I'm not sure why, so just hit the X, take that out. We've got GPS speed. I'm going to resize this a little bit. I don't need the measures taking up that much space. And then right click anywhere up in here, add panel. You can put this wherever you want. I'm going to put it to the right. And then in here, click choose. If you scroll down, you'll see track map. Select the track map. You can resize this some more to your liking. Since my focus is mostly the map itself, I'm going to adjust it like that. Now you can you can zoom in and out on the track map using the plus and minus buttons up here, or if you have the scroll wheel on your mouse, you can zoom in and out that way. Now one of the things I noticed right offhand is that the uh, line for the track map isn't as thick as I like, so I'm going to change that to 3 and change the dot size to 3 as well. So that makes it a little more visible for me. So if I want to look for slow points, let's say the first actual braking zone is here. I can move the mouse or I can use the arrow keys to get right to that slow point. Then, going back over to the track map, you can zoom in or out. See just where that's at. So there I see that's the slow point. You can also change the maps. Um, I've found that sometimes the maps are not, uh, don't line up as well as I might like from one provider or another. There's open street maps. Um, Esri, Esri generally seems to be the most accurate, but the uh, graphic detail and resolution isn't as good as some of the others. Uh, Bing is, also tends to be fairly accurate, and this will vary from track to track, so uh, try different ones to see which one you like best. Uh, as far as the quality of the imagery, uh, this one definitely Google has the best, but there's some areas where it shows that you're in the dirt such as over here. So depends on what you're trying to do. Um, so there we go. You know, if we want to look at, you know, let's switch back over to Esri just because that seems to be the most accurate, uh, at least in this part of the track. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, and again, makes it pretty easy to find the slow points. Now, if you also want to bring in, okay, so let's say we've got this slow point. Let's get that right on there. Okay, so that is our precise slow point. Now, if you've got other measures like brake pressure, we can bring that in as well to kind of confirm. And just like if you're doing anything in the other, uh, in the other um, time distance measurements, we can choose different graphs. Here I'm going to change brake pressure to be in the second. 
And then we can look at the measures here, even if we want. We'll go back over here a little bit. And we'll look for that to actually hit zero bar. So then you can see that the brake release is actually slightly before the slowest point, in case that matters to you. But if you're trying to coach somebody as far as what the actions are with their hands, then you will probably see that the slowest point is not exactly the same as the brake release. But getting them somewhere in that area will be obviously highly effective. You can also bring in throttle if you want to. If someone's wondering about uh, where they should be releasing the throttle, so let's drop brake down to three and put throttle into two. So here, let's say throttle release going into turn six. Obviously this will vary based on the bike and the speed that the rider is carrying up into that area. But there it is. Let me try and move them out here. So if there's something off to the side that they can see, a curb, whatever it might be, then, or a tree or a rock or whatever it might be, uh, something that they can use as a reference that that is the brake release point or the throttle release point or beginning of braking. Now on top of that, if you do have video, you can add this in as well. We've got our track map here, got our video. So let's say, so this brings up a fresh window and we want to add break. Actually, we need to start with speed. We need to put RPM in there first. And then GPS speed, take RPM out. And maybe we want to put track map over here. So we can remove that panel, add a panel at the bottom, choose track map. We've got that. Let's resize the measures. To a degree. But let's say we've got this same point. Here is our slow point of the corner. So if you've got the accompanying video that's lined up with it from a smarty cam, then you can see exactly where you are. And we can still zoom in on the track map. So that may help people find visual references to better, best understand what the slow point is. Let's get a uh, break in here again. Switch that. Take a break in panel two. Change the line thickness again because it's another panel. And if we want to see the break release, it's right about there. So in this instance, and we've got the break data in the video too. So you can see there is the proper break release right about there, a little bit before the apex.
and we can bring throttle into this one too. That is two, break is three. And if we want to see where end of throttle is, see that it's right there. Oh, you know what? I actually need to change. So that first lap is actually an out lap. So let's change it to lap four, take this one out. There we go. That's more like it. That makes more sense. Okay. So there we've got our slow point, but we can see that the rider has been off the brake. So when was end of throttle? For the bridge. So if I'm looking for visual references as to when I should, when I can safely cut the throttle and begin braking. So it's after the white line. Assuming the rider has good brake control. And obviously, we'll see the data in the video too. Throttle's chopped there. And the video has a little bit of a lag, which is pretty typical. As far as what the actual data shows, and we can confirm that by looking at our channels. You see, throttle is off. Completely off at that point. So somewhere in between the white line and the bridge. And then after your, you've got things set up the way that you like, be sure to save the profile. And if you want to save it as a new profile, you can hit Save Profile As. In this case, I'm just saving it as Basic. So there's the name of your profile, and then Bridge Bike is the session that we're looking at.